Hi, this is Jesper, and I make videos on YouTube for technology professionals who want to make a difference. Hi, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the warehouse, a lake, and a lake house. Um, did I forget something? Data, yes. A data warehouse, a data lake, and a data lake house. Yes, finally got it right. To explain the differences, we're going to start with the data life cycle. And the data life cycle consists of three stages. There's a data creation stage, there's a data processing stage, and there's a data reporting and insight stage. The complication is that data is processed in silos, typically through applications such as an ERP application or a CRM application. These two applications create different data in different format. And the purpose of any data warehouse, data lake or data lake house, is to combine data from several data sources to create a unified view of that data. A further complication is that data is growing rapidly from about 60 zettabytes in 2020 to 180 zettabytes estimated for 2025. That is, this is data that we are creating, ingesting and storing. Data is typically divided into three categories, structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. Structured data can be normalized and it can be put into a relational database and then manipulated using SQL or the structured query language. Structured data is easy to retrieve, update, delete and analyze. Examples of structured information is data that comes from a CRM or an ERP application, including customer records, product inventory and financial data. I've made a few videos on structured data and normalization in the past and I've put the links in the video description. Semi-structured data cannot be normalized but have some consistent properties as well as variable elements. Examples of semi-structured data include JSON, XML, uh, HTML and Emacs. Semi-structured data is typically stored in a NoSQL database which doesn't have a relational schema, which makes it more flexible, but it makes it harder to retrieve and manipulate data. Unstructured information has no predefined format or structure and cannot easily be queried, analyzed or manipulated. It is typically stored in its native format and requires specialist tools for any kind of meaningful extraction or manipulation. Examples of unstructured data include text files, documents, spreadsheets, audio, video and social media posts. You can of course put unstructured data into structured data such as a blob which stands for a binary large object, but once you put unstructured data into a blob, it cannot be accessed or manipulated. In the concept of structured, semi-structured and unstructured data, let's look at the data warehouse, the data lake and the data lake house in more detail. The data warehouse was the first response to the growth in data and surged in popularity in the 1990s when data silos became increasingly problematic. It was made possible through the relational databases and the theories of structuring and normalizing data advanced by Edgar Codd in the 1970s. The data warehouse is a data storage pattern and intended to be used for large amount of structured historical data and used for analytical purposes such as business intelligence. Popular data warehouse technologies include Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery and Snowflake. The growth of unstructured and semi-structured data led in 2005 to the concept of big data and in 2010 to the concept of the data lake. A data lake allows data scientists to mine and analyze large amounts of data for a number of reasons and purposes using tools and techniques such as machine learning. Data lakes have many benefits such as flexibility, scalability, cost effectiveness and innovation. 
but they also have their difficulties. Data quality, governance, security, and integration. A poorly managed data lake can become a data swamp, which is a term for a data lake that is inaccessible or unreliable. One of the first data lake frameworks were HADOPS, which provided a distributed file system and processing framework that could handle massive amount of data and enable the creation, storage, and management of data lakes. The leading data lake vendors today include AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Databricks, and Snowflake. The data lake house is a new kid on the block. It is a response to the need to manage structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. It's a data storage pattern that combines the benefit of the data warehouse and the data lake. It seeks to combine the ease of access and support for analytics of a data warehouse with the flexibility and the cost advantages of a data lake. A data lake house is enabled by new system design that implements similar data structures and features to a data warehouse, such as transactions, asset properties, and indexes. It sits directly on top of low-cost cloud storage through open file formats such as Parquet. A data lake house can support various types of analytics, including business intelligence, machine learning, and real-time analytics across both structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. Data lake houses need to support features such as transactions, concurrency control, time travel, audit history, backup and recovery, and disaster recovery. They also need to monitor and troubleshoot data pipelines and workflows, as well as ensuring availability and reliability of the platform. The leading data lake vendors and technologies include AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Databricks, and Snowflake. Let's use a non-technical comparison. I'm Swedish and in the previous video I used Volvo, so in this video I'm going to use IKEA. Imagine you have a lot of furniture you want to store and use. A data warehouse is like an IKEA showroom, where the furniture is carefully assembled, arranged and displayed by theme, function and style. You can easily find the furniture you want and use it in a cozy and practical way. However, you can only store furniture that fits the IKEA standards and quality and you need to follow IKEA's instructions and guidelines. A data lake is like an IKEA storeroom where you can dump any kind of furniture you want regardless of its material, shape or condition. You don't need to assemble or arrange the furniture you just need to label them with some information. You can store as many furniture as you want, but finding the furniture you want can be chaotic and frustrating. You also need to have the right tools and skills to use the furniture, especially if they are in different parts or pieces. A data lake house is like a hybrid of an IKEA showroom and an IKEA storeroom, where you can store both assembled and unassembled furniture in different sections. You can assemble and arrange some of the furniture according to your needs while leaving others unprocessed for future use. You can access the furniture using different methods and tools depending on your purpose and preference. This is a fast moving area where we have a lot of technology innovation and new announcements almost on a daily basis. If you like this video, why not hit the like and the subscribe button? And if you have any interesting experiences implementing a data lake or a data lake house, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. I hope to see you in my next video and take care until then.